Striker Scorpion 82 is now sponsored by Warhammer Combat Cards, a card battle game featuring your favourite Citadel miniatures from the 40k universe. Build your army decks, dominate opponents in player versus player action, collect and upgrade cards to fit your strategy, improve their power and unlock unique traits. Choose from all 40k factions, take part in campaigns based on iconic 40k battles, rise to the top of the leaderboard and win glory. Free to download and play, link is in the video description below or on the channel homepage and by using the unique link it helps support the channel. Thanks and enjoy the game. Right, welcome to this review uh, for Psychic Awakening, War of the Spider. Uh, in this episode, we will be taking uh, a look at the Death Guard Chaos Space Marines. So, uh, for this War of the Spider book, I'm going to split it into different sections so you can uh, access the relevant information that you need, just to make things a lot easier for everybody uh, to uh, focus in on the different factions uh, they're interested in. So, check out GamingFigures.com uh, for discount 40k and uh, other gaming systems available from them as well. Uh, link for them will be in the video description below. So we've already looked at Adeptus Custodes and uh, the agents of the Imperium as well with the Assassins. So now we'll take a look at the Death Guard Cow Space Range. So I don't collect uh, Death Guard but Aaron Allen does. He has those uh, represented on the channel and they've sort of fantastic home but they've sort of been left behind other factions have, have leapt ahead with their upgrades and updates and so on uh, so it's about time now I think for Death Guard to get some decent uh, upgrades to help them out just a bit but just to push them in the right uh, direction amazing models like a real good job that Games Workshop have done uh, with the Death Guard range just looking at some of the uh, pictures of them here uh, for the Imperial agents just fighting against the Death Guard but uh, incredible models so, yeah, it's an amazing range. Really, really good. So, the Fecund Legion here. So, they're just clarifying uh, this is known before uh, that they now get hate for assault. So, if they uh, charge heroic intervention or are charged, then it's plus one attack. Just to match Space Marines, clarifying bolt weapons and plague weapons, uh, malicious volleys, same as the Space Marines, remain stationary. You get uh, to fire at long range and so on. Uh, Terminators get the, the full rate as well as Hell Brutes. Uh, so that's all just clarified there. So, relics then. Some more relics that are available to the Death Guard. Looking for some really good ones. Ones that may well help Aaron Allen out with his uh, Death Guard army. So, if your army is led by Death Guard Warlord, you can give one of the following relics of Decay to a, a Death Guard character model from your army instead of giving them a relic from the Codex Death Guard. Named characters, characters such as Typhus cannot be given, that's just the usual rules. So, the Ague Stone, so this is for the Lord of Contagion, uh, model only, subtract one from the strength characteristic of enemy models whilst they're within three inches of a model from your army of this relic. So, yes, okay. I'm searching for gold nuggets, that's what I like to look for in these books. Like, really good relics and warlord traits and, and stratagems, and if I see them, I'll, I'll call them out here. That one's alright, but nothing too special just thinking you know it's, it needs to be pretty good if it's going to take that slot for a relic it's got to be a good one that one's all right uh the all weather the all weather uh model equipped with a bow sword only uh, and then it replaces it you get plus one strength eight minus three and two damage abilities it's a plague weapon uh when resolve an attack maybe this weapon an invun save and throw cannot be made so no invuns allowed interesting pretty good not too bad a weapon uh, Demon's Toll, 
Noxious Blight, bring a model only. Models in friendly death guard units, excluding Chaos Cultists and Poxwalker units, have a 5 plus invon save whilst the units within 7 inches of a model from your army with this relic. That is a good relic. Great. Fantastic, really good. So, you know, units of Plague Marines, crowd them round. The Noxious Blight, bring it, and the 5 plus invon save available to units within 7. Nice bubble, 14 inch wide bubble. So, that's a good one. Uh, the Epidemist Blade, so uh, it's model equipped with a Hellforged Sword only, it replaces that, you get plus one strength, AP minus two, and three damage. Uh, it's a plague weapon, resolve an attack made by this weapon, unmodified hit roll of six scores, additional hit, but a damage three. So, pretty good, character killer here. Yep, All right, so uh, not too bad at all. Uh, the Putrid Perapt, or Periapt. Periapt, not sure on the pronunciation, psychic model only, model of this relic, knows one additional psychic power, once in each of your psychic phases after a psychic power is resolved, was manifested by model of this relic, uh, that model can regain up to d3 lost wounds, nice, interesting, this might go quite well on a demon prince that one, you know, one that's in the thick of the fight and taking damage in close combat and then able to restore lost wounds, nice, that one's pretty good as well. And the Worm Spitter, model equipped with a Bolt Pistol only. Uh, so you replace the Bolt Pistol with range 15 pistol, 1 strength, 5 minus 2, and 1 damage. Again, it's a Plague Weapon. Resolve an attack made by this weapon. If a hit is scored, the target is corroded until the end of the turn. Resolve an attack made by a weapon by a friendly Death Guard model against a corroded unit. The weapon gains the Plague Weapon ability for that attack. So, it's okay. So there's a few good ones there. A number of uh, ones that are actually pretty good. Okay, so yeah, definitely some options to try out for sure with those relics. Then you've got two pages of extra stratagems as well. No, three pages. Nice and generous here from Games Workshop. So three more pages uh, of relics. Plus, you, there's going to be the unique relics that are available as well, uh, depending on what sub faction or uh, war bands, I think they're calling it here. Plague companies, right, it's a plague company. Seven different options, obviously, seven. Okay, so, plague chosen. Uh, one command point, use your strategy before the battle. After nominating your warlord, select one death guard character model from your army that does not have a warlord trait, right? So it's an extra warlord trait for another character model. Excellent. Uh, Harbinger of Nurgle. Use this one command point, use a strategy before the battle, select one Lord of Contagion unit from your army. To end of that battle, that unit has the following ability. Uh, it's Harbinger of Nurgle. Real hit rolls of one for, any, for all attacks made by models in friendly death guard units whilst within six inches of this model. This is actually like a uh, captain. Nice. Uh, virulent rounds. Yeah, that's useful, that one. That is useful. One command point just to get grant reroll ones to create a bit of a bubble. Fine. Uh, Virulent rounds. One command point uses strategy in shooting phase when a plague range unit from your army is chosen to shoot with. To the end of that phase, bolt weapons. Models in this unit equipped to gain the following abilities. So, plague weapon. When resolve an attack made by this weapon against an infantry unit, a modified wound roll of a 6. The arm penetration characteristic of that weapon is AP minus 4 for that attack. Okay. So. Yeah, not bad. If, you, if you've got enough shots, it's worth doing, maybe. Next, Soul Harvest. One command point. Use a strategy in the fight phase when a Death Guard Demon Prince model from your army is, that is equipped with a demonic axe or Hellforged sword is chosen to fight with. To end of that phase, add three to the model's attacks characteristic. Only infantry units can be chosen as the target of its attacks. So, extra attacks. Uh, may come in handy at the right point. Uh, foul Gush. Use a one command point, use a strategy in shooting phase when a foul blight spawn model from your army is chosen to shoot with. At the end of that phase, roll to turn the number of attacks made of a plague sprayer by that model. Roll an additional d6 and discard one of the dice. In addition, to the end of that phase, when rolling to determine the strength characteristic of that weapon, roll an additional d6 and discard one of the dice. So yeah, a bit more reliable. Just at that right point in the battle where you just need a little bit more reliability, then may well be an option to go for. Relentless volleys, one or two command points. Use the strategy from your shooting phase with a death guard infantry unit from your army it's chosen to shoot with. To end of that phase, bolt guns, a bolt gun, and the bolt gun profile combi weapons models in that unit equipped with a type characteristic of rapid fire 2. 
And then in addition to the end of that phase, combi bolter models in that unit are equipped with have a type characteristic of rapid fire three. If the unit contains six or more models, this trash some costs two command points. Yeah, not too bad for relentless follies. You know, you're always using strat all the time. It's just at that particular point in the game where you just need a little bit more of a push, then you can call upon one of those trash rooms just to give unit a boost. So that's what like, that one does, relentless volleys. Rapid fire three. It's just like six shots each then. On a Terminator model. Or infantry units to stand still. Combi bolters, yeah, no, combi bolters, so the Terminator models. Nice. Okay, uh, putrid fecundity, two or three command points. Use the strategy from your opponent's shooting phase or the fight phase when a plague range unit from army is chosen as the target for an attack. If the unit contains ten or fewer models, then it costs two command points, otherwise, it costs three command points. So use the strategy at the end of the fight until the end of that phase when making a disgusting and resilient roll for a model in the unit. It's plus one to the roll, it's plus one to your disgusting rolls. Two or three command points. Quite pricey that one. Hmm. Okay. Uh, trench fighters. One command point. Use a strategy from the fight phase and when a fight phase when a plague range unit from your army is chosen to fight. With. At the end of that phase, when a model in that unit fights, if it is equipped with one or more plague knives, it can make an additional attack with one plague knife. Extra attack. Creeping blight. Uh, one command point, use a stratagem in the fight phase and a death guard unit from an army is chosen to fight over to the end of that phase and resolve an attack made by weapon by a modern unit, add one to any damage roll made for that attack and on an unmodified wound roll of a six, the iron penetration characteristic of that weapon is AP minus four. Fight phase, death guard unit from an chosen to five. Plus one to any damage roll. Great. Yeah. Plus one damage. You get tons of attacks coming through. Even damage one turning into damage two is um, excellent. Very useful against like Primaris targets or vehicles, light vehicles and so on. And that's one command point for that. So that one's quite tasty, that one. That. Pretty good. Uh, warp Toll. One command point. Use a stratagem at the start of the morale phase. Select one noxious blight. Bring a model from your army. At the end of that phase, when taking morale test, an enemy unit within seven of that model have one to the roll. In addition, if that if the morale test is failed, double the number of models that flee. So that's alright. Then hypertoxic tinctures. <laughs> Use a stratagem before the battle. Select one plague surgeon model from your army. At the end of the battle, that model has the following ability. So um re-roll wind rolls of one or two for attacks made with plague weapons by models in friendly death guard units whilst the unit is within six inches of that model so yeah okay not bad helpful enough uh nox noxious rupture one command point use a strategy in any phase other than the morale phase when the last model in a death guard unit from your army is destroyed before removing that model from play select one enemy unit within three inches of that model At the end of your opponent's next turn resolve an attack made by a model from the selected unit subtract one from the hit roll so minus one to hit rolls could come in handy, it's not too significant. Eruption of filth. <laughs> One command point. Use this strategy when a death guard terminator model from your army is destroyed. Before removing that model from play, roll 1d6 for each unit within 7 inches that does not have the noble keyword. Uh, on a 4 plus unit being rolled 4 suffers a mortal wound. So, chance of causing some damage. Yeah, one Terminator, it's just when one Terminator is destroyed. Just one model and you can activate that stratagem. A mutant Strain. On command point, use a stratagem in the fight phase and a Poxwalkers unit from your army is chosen to fight with until the end of that phase and resolve an attack made by a melee weapon by a model in that unit against an infantry unit. An unmodified wound roll of six inflicts a mortal wound. On the target, attack sequence ends. Unmodified hit roll of one. The model's unit suffers one mortal wound. Hmm. So it's like a yeah, like a fighting frenzy, but the ability to cause mortal wounds. Nice. So yeah, if you can get enough attacks going, I take it it's just all the attacks will get this benefit. If you're all in ones, you're taking a mortal wound. 
if you're on sixes, you're causing a mortal wound. But that's a potentially quite scary, that one. If you're allowed to roll that for all of your attacks, and you've got a unit of 20 of them, maybe with two attacks each, and then you're going to get plenty of sixes to wound, and it's going to be mortal wounds coming through. Yeah, interesting that one. Perhaps one to watch out for. There's a nasty sting now potentially to Boxwalker units in close combat. Hmm. Okay, not too bad. Uh, next, Miasmal Afflictions, two command points. Use this strategy at the start of the fight phase. Select one enemy unit within an inch of a Plague Marines unit from your army. To the end of that phase, subtract one from the toughness characteristic of models in the enemy unit whilst it is not within range of Mortarian's Toxic Presence ability. Nice on toughness. Interesting. Uh, overwhelming generosity next. Sounds quite nice, that one. Overwhelming generosity. One command point. Use this stratagem in your shooting phase when a Death Guard unit from your army, excluding Chaos Cultists and Poxwalkers, is chosen to shoot with. To the end of that phase, add six inches to the range of plague weapons, excluding melee weapons, models in the unit equipped to its plus six range. You may just need it, just to get within range without having to move, perhaps, something like that. Fire Fever, one, one command point, use your strategy from your shooting phase after you've declared how you'll split the shots of a Hellbrute model from your army that is equipped with two ranged weapons. At the end of that phase, if that model shoots all of its weapons at the same target, resolve an attack made by that model, you can re-roll hit, re hit rolls if you fight at the same target. Next is Parasitic Fumes, one command point, use your strategy from the end of your movement phase, select one Mephitic Blight Haulers unit from your army. To end of that turn, when attack is allocated to an enemy model within 7 inches of that unit, improve the arm penetration characteristic of the weapon. That attack is being made with by 1 for that attack. So AP0 becomes AP-1. Okay, so it's not too bad. So there's a couple of good ones in here, it's okay. So you'd be able to harvest a good, a, a good few from here. Stratagems and relics, so far they're alright. Nothing that's silver nugget maybe, but no no gold nuggets so far. Life Eater, one command point. Use this stratagem in the fight phase. When a Death Guard unit from your army is chosen to fight with. At the end of that phase, resolve an attack made by a plague weapon by a model in that unit. Unmodified hit roll of six. Automatic scores a hit. Auto wounds as well. So that's all right. Yep. Accelerated entropy. One command point. Use this stratagem before the battle. Select one plague burst crawler model from your army. At the end of the battle, entropy cannons that model and all friendly plague burst crawler models within 7 inches of that model equipped with have the following abilities. This is interesting. Okay, so, resolve an attack made by this weapon. A damage roll of 1 or 2 counts as 3 instead, and that is pretty good, actually. Definitely, if you've got 2 of them, or 3 of them, that's pretty good. Yeah, just makes that D6. So, you, you, you're paying the command point once. The model gets it for the entire game, and it overflows onto other units nearby. So that's high value, that one. That one's a really good one. Uh, contaminated contaminated Monstrosity. One command point. Use a strategy before the battle. Select one Death Guard unit, including Chaos Cultists and Titanic units from your army, with wounds characteristic of 12 or less for one command point, or 13 or more for two command points. To the end of the battle, if that unit does not have the Disgustingly Resilient ability, gains Disgustingly Resilient. Hmm. Interesting. That one's a good option to have as well. Yeah, not too bad. Useful strategy that one. So yeah, not not too bad here. Plague companies then. Uh, so they're going to give you uh, all the traits, relics, stratagems as you choose which of the plague companies to go for. So. Wondering which will help Aaron out with his, his current list and the way his list may well be heading, I'm not sure. Uh, I wonder which will be the best option to take. Maybe room for experimentation, but we'll run through these here and see if any of these are any good. So, uh, the Harbing Harbingers first. Wall or trait, Shamble Rot. When an enemy infantry model is destroyed as the result of an attack made by a melee weapon by this Warlord, add one model to a friendly Harbingers Poxwalkers unit within 7 inches of this Warlord. <laughs> Pretty good. You must pay reinforcement points for each model that you add to the unit. So that would increase the unit above its starting strength. Right, so if you go above your starting strength, you can use it to top up back up to your uh, original number. 
So then, interesting. Uh, rock skull bomb for the relic. Uh, it replaces a blight grenade. It becomes range 6, grenade 2d3, strength 5, minus 2, and 2 damage. It's a plague weapon. Resolve an attack made by this weapon. Do not make a hit roll. It's auto hits as well. And, wow. The rock skull bomb. Pretty good. Is it one use only? Nope. Use it as many times as you want. 2d3 auto hits at strength 5 minus 2 and 2 damage. Bring down a squad of 5 intercessors. Brilliant. Absolutely fantastic. So that's a really good one. And you get 2 stratagems, potentially unique ones uh, for the Harbingers here as well. So 1 or 3 command points from the Carrion Heaps. Use this stratagem before the battle. Select 1 uh, Harbingers Poxwalkers units from your army for 1 command point. Or 2 a box of units from your army, three command points. You can set the selected units up underground instead of setting them up on the battlefield. The end of movement phase, for each of the units that are under the ground, you can set them up anywhere on the battlefield. The usual rules, deep striking, a uh, hole within nine inches of a battlefield edge, and more than nine inches away from any models. So it's actually got a hug around the, the edge of the board. Uh, you can use this stratagem once per battle. Interesting, that one. Yeah, not bad. And then life beyond death here. One command point, use the stratagem in the fight phase from the last model in Harbinger's unit from your army is destroyed as a result of an attack. The unit contain, contain the model that made that attack suffers D3 mortal wounds. And it's fight phase only, that one. So D3 mortal wounds if the last model's slain. So not bad there, that one. Uh, the inexorable. See, the only thing... Yeah, it's a shame. I, I, I think they should really have done not just a wall or trait, a relic, and some stratagems. They should have done like a trait, an actual trait, uh, for each of these companies. Just my opinion, you know, like I'm painting up Harlequins at the moment, and the different types of Harlequin uh, sub-factions within there. Um, you get different abilities, just slight ones. An extra attack on the charge, for example. The ability to fall back and charge, or well, that's already a rule, but um, abilities like that. Just sort of bonuses across the board, across all the units. That doesn't seem to be here, which I think is a shame. They could have added that in. All, you know, all units in a Harbinger's detachment uh, gain an extra attack on the charge, or reroll ones to wound. I think not necessarily huge and massive, but some kind of trait running through these. But uh, all they're giving you here is a wall of trait a relic. Some of these might be a a bubble to influence units, but uh, still, I would like to have seen perhaps a a broad bonus uh, for the entire detachment. But um, never mind. It's uh, it's done now. Inexorable. Then, so the warlord trait is ferric blight. Resolve an attack made by a weapon by a friendly inexorable model against an enemy vehicle unit within seven inches of this warlord. Improve the iron penetration characteristic of that weapon by one. That's okay. Uh, putrescent relic, the leech spore casket. When a model is destroyed as a result of an attack made by a melee weapon by a model from your army with this relic, one friendly inexorable vehicle model within 18 inches regains up to one lost wound. Each model from your army that can regain from your army can regain up to three lost wounds per turn as a result of this ability. Cutting through enemy units and yeah, getting wounds back. Interesting that one. Two relics here. Uh, Unholy Essence, one command point. Use the stratagem at the start of your shooting phase. Select up to three inexorable vehicle units from your army to the end of that phase. Those units gain the inexorable advance ability. Uh, see Codex Death Guard. At a. At a no, I yeah, could be wrong. I'm not sure what that rule is. Could be something like no penalty for moving and firing, something like that. Uh, ferric Miasma, one command point, use a stratagem in your opponent's charge phase. When an exorable unit from your army is chosen as a target of a charge declared for an infantry unit, subtract two from the charge roll made for that charge. Yeah, it could be helpful. Okay, maybe this next one will be the best suited for Aaron here. It's Mortarian's Anvil. So the Warlord trait, a glooming bloat. When resolving an attack made against this Warlord, Unmodified wind roll one to three always fails. That's similar to um, 
uh, Captain Lysander's Warlord trait, irrespective of any abilities that the weapon or the model making it making that attack has. Then Petrescent Relic uh, Tollkeeper, a Tallyman model only, resolve an attack made uh, with a melee weapon by a model in a Mortarian's Anvil unit from your army within seven inches of a friendly model of this relic, and a modified hit roll of a six scores an additional hit. So six is popping extra hits. Uh, futility made flesh next, two or three command points. Use this strategy from your opponent's shooting phase when a Mortarian's Anvil Terminator unit from your army is chosen as a target for an attack. At the end of that phase, resolve an attack made by a melee weapon made with a weapon against that unit. Reduce the damage characteristic of that weapon by one to a minimum of one for that attack. If that unit contains five or fewer models, this strategy costs two command points, otherwise it costs three. And then Relaptic Assault, one command point. Use this strategy from your opponent's charge phase. Select one Mortarian Zavoy Infantry unit from your army. To end that phase, that unit can perform a heroic intervention as if it were a character. Interesting. Useful. A useful strategy for sure. So next is the Wretched. So, uh, all of trait, Eater Plague. <laughs> When an enemy model is destroyed as a result of an attack made by a melee weapon by this warlord, this warlord regains up to one lost wound to a maximum of three per phase. Great. Restoring wounds. Any, any ability to restore wounds are, are really alike, so that's cool. Putrescent Relic, the Demon's Favour. Uh, mal uh, malignant Plague Caster, model only. Model from your with this relic replaces its pestilential fallout ability with the following. Uh, Torrent of Putrefaction. After resolving a psychic power manifested by this model. If the result of the psychic test for that power is less than seven, the nearest enemy unit within seven inches of that model suffers a mortal wound. In addition, if the psychic test cast for that power is seven or more, select one enemy unit within seven inches of this model, it's D3 mortal wounds. So, it's the ability to cause, it's, it's tight range though, seven inches. Uh, the Rotted Veil, one command point, uses strategy at the end of your movement phase, select one wretched character, Unit from your army that has not performed a demonic ritual this turn, that unit can perform demonic ritual as if it were your movement phase and that model had not moved, regardless of whether or not it arrived as reinforcements this turn. In addition, to the end of the phase, or to the end of the turn, when the unit performs a demonic ritual, roll only roll 1d6 for the summoning toll and add 7 to the result. Okay, and there's sevenfold blessings. One command point, use this strategy before the battle, select one wretched psyker, model from your army, to the end of that phase, a psychic test is taken for that model, you can reroll one of the dice, you can use this strategy once per battle. Yeah, okay, it's on the model the whole time. Okay. Next, the pox mongers, maybe going for a poxwalker themed style list. Here, the warlord trait is Sangus Flux, Resolve an attack made by a melee weapon by a friendly poxmonger's model against an enemy infantry unit whilst that your model's units within seven inches of this warlord. Prove the iron penetration characteristic of the weapons by one. So AP zero becomes AP minus one. The Petrescent Relic, uh, the Iron Clot Furnace. Models in poxmonger's demon engine units from your army have a four plus in one save whilst the unit is within seven inches of a friendly model of this relic. That's excellent. Very useful, four plus in one save is fantastic. So really good. And then the Bilious Blood Rush. One command point. Use this strategy from your shooting phase. Select one Poxmonger's Demon Engine unit from your army to the end of that phase. That unit can shoot in the turn in which it fell back. That's useful enough. Definitely useful. And then the Flux Abated. One command point. Use this strategy from the fight phase. And your model is destroyed as the result of an attack made by a model in a Poxmonger's Demon Engine unit from your army. One model in that unit can gain up to D3 lost. Wounds again, an ability to pick up wounds. So the ferrymen next. So so far, it's, these have been okay. Not too bad. I think some of the other factions have certainly done better, but um, not too bad here. Uh, for the death guard, wall or trait then the droning. When a morale test is taken for any unit within twelve inches of this wall, add two to the result. I can't see that being too significant. Putrescent relic, the ferryman's scythe. So, it replaces the Plague Reaper. Uh, with this one you get some melee weapon, it's plus 4 strength, AP minus 3, and straight 3 damage, no minus to hit rolls. Plague weapon, uh, when resolve an attack made 
with this weapon, unmodified wound roll of a 6 inflicts one mortal wound on the target in addition to any other damage. And then the Vermid Whispers now. So we're on to stratagems here for the ferryman. One command point, use the stratagem in your shooting phase. When a ferryman Blight Lord Terminator's unit from your army is chosen to shoot with, at the end of that phase, resolve an attack made by a model in that unit, add one to the hit roll. So just to bump you up, maybe two pluses to hit. And then on droning wings, two command points, use the stratagem at the start of the movement phase. Select one ferryman unit from your army. To the end of that phase, the range of that unit's aura abilities increased by seven inches. Yep. Note that the Nogal's gift ability certainly affects enemy units. Yep. Within an inch uh, of an affected friendly unit. Okay, so. The last one is Voltarian's Chosen Sons. So, the Warlord trait. Again, this might suit Aaron here. Voltarian's Chosen Son. Sounds good. So, uh, Warlord trait, crawling. Postulants, when resolving an attack made by a melee weapon against this warlord, subtract one from the hit roll. Uh, when an enemy unit, excluding units that can fly within an inch of this warlord, fall back, uh, roll 1d6 or 2 plus, the unit suffers d3 mortal wounds. If the enemy does fall back, then there's a chance of getting a bit of damage there. It's alright, that one. Uh, the putrescent relic, it's the vomitrix. <laughs> oh dear. This gruesome weapon contains a microscopic warp portal that leads directly into the festering guts of the great unclean one. Coo gaff. When its nozzle is opened, it spews ferocious gouts of the demon's highly corrosive bile. <laughs> Sorry, just had to read the, the story behind that. So, uh, model equipped to a plague sprayer only. This relic replaces the plague sprayer with uh, the vomitrix, which is 9 inch range, assault 7. Yeah, it is. Yeah, I knew it'd be auto hits. It's auto hits. So it's seven auto hits. Strength seven minus three, two damage. Oh, it's a primaris killer. Yep, that's a pretty good weapon. So, uh, yeah, plague weapon as well. Brilliant. Okay, so Vomitrix is really good. Uh, the am the am alembical narfisium. One command point. Uh, use this strategy before the battle. Select on Mortarian's chosen son's plague surgeon model from your army. To the end of that battle, replace the tainted Narfesian ability with the following. Uh, the Alembical Narfesian. When making a disgusting and resilient role for a friendly Mortarian son's, uh, Mortarian's chosen son's infantry model unit, after three inches of this model, you carry your old ones and twos. So, yep. Yeah. That's pretty helpful. That's making the Plague Surgeon go from okay to actually pretty good once you start stacking the stratagems on. That's pretty good. Uh, plague Brewers. It's only infantry though. Plague Brewers, one command point, use a stratagem in your shooting phase. When Walterian's chosen son's unit from your army is chosen to shoot with. At the end of that phase, Plague Belchers, Plague Spurt, Gauntlets and Plague Spewers. Uh, that models the unit are equipped with a damage characteristic of 2 plus. Nice. Yeah, a bit of a, a boost there for them as well. So then you've got your random name generator, and then I might just do a short video at the Agents of, of Bar here just to cover the rules uh, for Fabius Bar uh, in a separate video. So that's the Death Guard. Um, it's not too bad. Leave your own comments if you're a Death Guard player. What do you reckon? Do you think uh, they've been improved significantly? Uh, I think other factions perhaps have done better, but there's some pretty good stuff and you can uh, sift through that. There's plenty of options to go through. Those seven companies, you can work your way through those uh, and there's bound to be uh, some traits and strategies and so on that can be used or the right combination that you're looking for uh, to suit your army and, and play style. So I think to enhance uh, the way you try and go about obtaining victory on the battlefield. And uh, some stratagems and rules updates, not too bad. Uh, I think for the Death Guard, so hopefully that'll help them out, give them a little boost that they need. That's the video, keep a look out for more reviews on the channel, check out gamingfigures.com for your discount 40k and more. Thanks for watching and tune in next time.